We're the Travel Hacking Teachers. Six years ago, we left our home in Alaska to explore the world while working and raising our family overseas. Since then, we have taught in India, the United Arab Emirates, and now we teach in Indonesia. However, because of COVID-19, we have been in the United States for over six months teaching online until we receive our work visas. During our winter break, we decided that we needed to immerse ourselves in the snow, mountains, and the salty coastline of the United States northernmost state. Join us as we return home to Alaska. Good morning, Travel Hackers. We are starting a road trip today. We're in Seward. We've had a wonderful time here, but now we're heading north to Talkeetna. The only problem is it's 36 degrees. And what that means is that all of the snow that's built up for the last couple weeks is now starting to melt. And it's like a pure ice skating rink here with a layer of water on top of it. Here, take a look out the window. See, you see if I can show you the roads. I mean, that is just, like, not great. Yeah, not great for driving or walking. And how, I mean, gosh, what do we have, like, I don't know, a couple hundred miles to yeah. Talkeetna? So hopefully... We're going to probably be going pretty slow, so we're getting a good start today. Yeah. Early. Would it normally be a four-hour trip? Let's see how long it takes. Uh, four and a half hours. Let's see how long it takes us in these weather conditions. First thing, though, is we are going to stop at True Value, which is this amazing, kind of, like, Outdoor fishing catch all spot in Seward. We're gonna head on in and just try and get some face warmers. We've been checking the weather in Fairbanks, which is where our next stop after Talkeetna, and it's negative eight degrees all week. So, so we just need an extra layer to cover everyone's face. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty cold out there. <laughs> As we head out of town, the views of Resurrection Bay slowly fade in the rear view mirror. We love the ocean and we'll miss it, but our sights are set ahead of us as we head north, making our way to interior Alaska. We travel along the icy waters of Turnagain Arm. For the next few hours, we will be mesmerized by the mountains to the west of us. This is the Chugach Mountain Range. Stretching more than 9,000 square miles, Chugach State Park and the Chugach National Forest provide access to almost any outdoor adventure you could dream of. In the winter, you can ski, snowshoe, ride in a snow machine, ice climb, ice skate, and more. Chugach not only names the mountains of South Central Alaska, it is the name of the Alaska Native people of the Kenai Peninsula and Prince William Sound. The Chugach people are Alutic, and they speak the Chugach dialect of Alutic language. We have the Alaska Native people to thank for protecting and caring for this beautiful land generation after generation. Driving north as the city lights of Anchorage and Wasilla fade away, the landscape rises steadily as we make our way towards another mountain range sculpted by receding glaciers and plate tectonics, the Alaska Range. And our final destination for today, Talkeetna, Alaska. And we have made it to the roadhouse, the historic roadhouse in downtown Talkeetna. Kelly and the kids are inside getting settled, and I cannot wait to give you a tour of this place. It is really amazing. But first, I'm going to walk across the street and grab some pizza from Mountain High Pizza Place. All right, pizza has been delivered. And again, as you can see just from the background, the roadhouse is beautiful. And this is well-deserved pizza since that drive here was pretty crazy with the rain and the snow and the sleet up in the pass. But it really cleared up and it opened up for us and we got to see ice climbers today. We got to see a coyote, a moose, but that was way out in the fields. All right, so it's dinner time. Uh, Trevor Hackers, we will see you in the morning. We were just served an amazing breakfast and it snowed a ton last night. So after breakfast, we're gonna go outside and uh, go play in the snow. We're gonna get into it and it looks and smells amazing. Take a look, we're on the outside of the roadhouse building, but look at all the ice that's hanging down off the roof. That's pretty crazy. Definitely not a place you wanna stand for too long. So Talkeetna is a wonderful winter town, very small town, Alaska, less than a thousand people live here full time. And in the winter, it's just 
so much to do in terms of exploration, hiking. There's lots of different outdoor recreation opportunities. And in the summer, this place really explodes. Then you've got all your rafting, trips to Denali, hikers, hunters. It's really a hop in town. So you can experience the kind of the tranquility and the peacefulness of the winter in Talkeetna. Or if you're here in the summer, you're gonna see a hustle and bustle of a really cool Alaska outdoor town. So one of the cool things about being in Talkeetna in the winter is the fact that so many stores are still open. So you've got restaurants, you've got the brewery, you've got arts and craft stores. But what we're going right now is Nagley's. That's a historic general store that's been open since the early 1900s. So very cool. Let's check it out and see what they've got inside. So the baby's sleeping and the other two are watching a movie. So there's only one thing left for us to do and that is coffee. coffee. So one of the things you miss when you're international is eggnog, at least for me. So I'm pretty pumped to get the eggnog latte. Coffee on a snowy day. Yeah, eggnog coffee is where it's at. <laughs> this is great. So while we're walking and uh, drinking coffee, let's talk a little bit about the history of this town. A hundred years ago, around the turn of the century, um, this was a huge hub for the Alaska Railroad. And there's three rivers that come together here, the Chulitna, the Susitna, and the Talkeetna. And so it's just a really busy place with the railroad and the rivers. 100 years ago was a really important place for merchants, prospectors, and miners, and everyone just traveling up into central Alaska. Fast forward 100 years, now it's just this really great tourist spot, and it's a launching pad for anyone who wants to hike Denali. So there's a lot of mountaineers, adventurers, and people just running to explore Alaska come right through Talkeetna. And one of the oldest buildings in town is the roadhouse uh, where we're staying. So we're looking forward to giving you a tour of that right now. Coming in from the cold, this roadhouse is just really, really an amazing hostel. No, and as <laughs> our kids love it here too. As you can see this, the first thing that you notice when you walk into the hostel is that it is just full of history. There's so much that has happened here since it was first built in 1914 at the turn of the century. So even just walking through the hostel hallways, it's just layered with maps and stuff about the Iditarod, but in here it's layered up with information about the first people who built it, what it was in the beginning and how it changed over time. You see photos, you see newspaper articles. It's just really amazing. You have these big open rooms in the hostel where you can just hang out. There's maps out here for you, but there's also things for your family to do or kids to do, puzzles and books and games and fireplace to cozy up to. So over in this section, you have, you know, your old books and magazines and things that probably people have traded out over time, but there's also artifacts, uh, local artist paintings and stuff like that. Over here, you have a whole timeline of National Geographic magazines, games for the kids, puzzles, coloring books, fun things. And then as we go into the other part of the hostel, 
it's a really long building, which is kind of kind of nice because there's a lot of different living spaces and living areas for visitors. These walls are just littered with people who've come here to rock climb, to do mountaineering, to explore the rivers. <laughs> Here's the money wall. So this has a map of Denali and the Alaska Range. Uh, many people will stay here on their way to summit Denali. And then as they stay here, they usually leave some money on the wall to indicate where they're coming from. And then lots of signed t-shirts and flags from everyone's home country that come pass through here on their way to their adventure. No tour isn't complete unless I've talked about this t-shirt very specifically has Alaska wrapped up in just a little short phrase. So if you, you know, you had your bumper sticker saying, this is pretty funny for Alaska. It says, Alaska where men are men and women win the Iditarod. And it's all about um, Libby Riddles, who was the first woman to win the Iditarod back in 1985. And then Susan yeah. Butcher, who's super okay. famous here as well. She won it the next four years. So five consecutive years of women winning the Iditarod. Um, was pretty special, so it's pretty fun. As Kelly mentioned, we've actually been to the Roadhouse a number of times back when we used to live in Alaska, although we never stayed. Uh, now, in terms of COVID-19 and just everything sort of needing to be restructured, what the Roadhouse has done, I think, is pretty innovative. So they've always had bunk houses that you can rent, uh, but what they've done now is they've basically tied a bunk room to its own bathroom. So you have your own bathroom, your own bunk room, and that way you're sort of socially distanced. Now, we've been fortunate, we're the only ones here, so we have the run of the mill, but I wanna show you now what these bunk rooms look like. So this is a typical bunk room. We've got a double bed and a single bed up above. You've got a little work desk. You've got sinks, coffee supplies, and this is a typical bunk room. There are two of these on the lower level. And again, they're each tied to their own bathroom. Now where we stayed was upstairs. I'll show you that now. So the upstairs bunks are pretty cute. And the way this works is th there's only one bathroom up here. So what the owner has done is if you want to book the upstairs, you book the entire suite. So we have three rooms with the one bathroom. So it's just our family up here. And the rooms are really, really cute. I think they're decorated uh, really well. You can see we've got the single bed. We've got, I think the queen size mattress here. And there's just plugins for all of your stuff. And again, cute Alaska memories on the wall. There was also a plate of cookies here that did not last uh, very long. So again, uh, Miss Trisha, thank you for the cookies. They were delicious. And this place is great. I do want to show you the bathroom because it's really, really cute as well. So the best part about the bathroom is this old tub. I love the kind of the built-in, but this old cast iron tub and the, the shower is really cool. So again, nice detail, very historic building. The roadhouse is really an historic place. If you're going to be in Tucky, now this is where you're going to want to stay. There's a lot of history here just to see the sites and sort of be a part of the story of the roadhouse is, is pretty great. And a part of this cu travel culture, yeah, which oh, is absolutely. pretty cool. And for sure, if you come, make sure that you get some of the famous cinnamon rolls because oh, yeah. they are amazing. And just tour around the town, it's really cute. And in the winter, it's like this little tiny Christmas village or winter village. Yeah. Um, in the summer, it's just this booming river town and mountain town, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, so there's no wrong time to come to Takeda. All right, Travel Hackers, we hope you enjoyed this episode and a look into a quintessential mountain town. And now we are heading north to Fairbanks, so we'll see you on the road.